von Stein and this is another episode of The Facts and I'm here tonight with Beth Griffith, Bern Nix and Andrew Wolotowski and uh, we're doing a, uh, we're continuing this work uh, I call Palau from the Future. It's about somebody living in the year 3000, a woman living in the year 3000 and um, and when, every, when all the economic problems have been solved and health problems have been solved and everybody's looking really good and, 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 and dying, you know, when it, it seems to me the prediction is that people will die, suddenly their cells will give out because there's only so long they think cells can last, but everything else can be fixed and, uh, for a long time. So people will be playing tennis, getting married, I don't know if they'll be having kids, but for a long, long time, life will continue, and so they'll, they'll go through different professions, they'll realize themselves and, and, and live past the neuroses of their childhood, uh, and will have the benefit of these m more fully realized uh, personalities. Um, so this character that, I'm, that I'm, we're dealing with, we're doing a rehearsal now for the episode, uh, and it's also an episode, the rehearsal, that's the way the facts works, uh, is uh, she's looking for her next love relationship. One of the issues in this period of time is that love relationships last about uh, six, seven, eight years, and, and, and she's trying to figure out what her next move is, and um, she, she's very sensitive. She doesn't want to be hurt, and... Um, <laughs> try one of the tunes that we're going to be playing later in this episode, and we're going to play it right now, called Guitar. Um, and so, I'm struggling with this, uh, my part in this. Um, so we're going to practice it a little bit. Um, I wrote it, but I... <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let's do it. Uh, should I call the time? Sure. Or, okay, slow. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
did it again. Sorry. Absolutely. I just sort of hung around. <laughs> hang around. It's okay. It's okay. Your pieces have that built in. Thank that God. Quality. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you have foresight. <laughs> uh, okay. You want you want you call the time, Brian. One, two, three, four. I'm struggling as it gives kind of this archiness about me that you know is not what I want. But <laughs> that's okay. So let's talk a little bit more about this um, period of time that we're that we're going to be mm, painting a picture of. Uh, so I said everybody's looking pretty good. Both men and women, they look, uh, they stay healthy. They're young looking. Everyone looks around 25 years old for their whole life. Uh, but mm -hmm. Men still, many men still seem to prefer young women, so it's not a matter of firm flesh or anything, because everybody has firm flesh. Uh, so, um, so one of the things that Palau is doing is she's investigating this phenomenon. She's trying to figure out what's going on here. Uh, and um, perhaps it's, it's, it's feeling, you know, feeling, feeling younger again, and what, what is that made up of? Maybe a little less purpose, a blinder, a wilder, a, uh, women seem to prefer people close to their own age, and even though everybody looks, this, you know, around the same age, you can see the difference. You can see it in their eyes. You can, you can see, you know, somebody is, uh, no matter how much. I remember one time years ago seeing this woman who looked. I saw her at a meeting, a business meeting, and she looked very young. She looked, she looked very young, but I knew she couldn't be very young because I knew her son was sitting there. He was like 50 or something, you know, <laughs> and. Um, and she looked, she looked, you know, young. And then she got up, and they, she had to walk down a set of stairs. And she walked so crickety; it was really weird. This this young mm. face on this yeah. on this hardly moving body. Um, um, but in the time that I'm describing, everybody's going to have everything. You know, it's not going to have crickety crickety nothing. Um, so um, let's try uh, losing weight, which I have been doing. <laughs> Not something you're supposed to talk about, yeah. <laughs> this is a worldwide, you know, the, oh, no, maybe not worldwide, but this is, you know, things that modern we are engaged in. And I think there's a lot more to it than, um, yeah. there's a lot more to it, I mean, there's a lot more to vanity, you know, <laughs> than meets the eye, you know, if you wanted to explore vanity. Um, so who has the, who has the, um, Soprano has it? So bar 15. Oh, yes. Bar 15. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what we, the way we have these things set up is that there's a cue, um, and we, we, decide, we decide who has the cue. In the last one, the guitar had the cue. In this one, the soprano has the cue, because we're usually coming out of these, out of improvisations into these things, and we want to make that movement smooth, so we have these cues. I just, I just mm -hmm. thought, huh? John's been watching all these things about dinosaurs. So it's kind of like it's the mating call, and we all know when to come together, <laughs> right? Okay. Well, I never thought of myself as a dinosaur. <laughs> <though>. <laughs>
That's the thing. I mean, I might be kind of crude, but I've never thought of myself as a dinosaur. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some future age might think of us that way, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course you're a dinosaur. I mean, you're a cauliflower, too. 70% of your DNA is like cauliflower. I mean, you, we are everything. And everything's us. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Hmm. Um, okay. That, that explains is, a lot. That is the, the window into our next piece. I feel so much better now that okay. I think of myself as cauliflower. Yeah, really. <laughs> Let's try it. Okay. The window. Oh, you see this piece of paper you would see it was like crazy mazy all over the place yeah. um, but you can't see the piece of paper uh, <laughs> so um, can we try it one more time yes. ladies yes. and gentlemen um, uh, oh I, before we do it, I just want to Beth and I went to this play uh, uh, that was uh, this with this uh, playwright director it was a there's a lot of sort of Hollywood type people, or at least that's what it looked like in the audience. It's kind of very slender women with big breasts and long blonde hair and, and uh, pretty faces, and, but you know, not happy. And, uh, not happy. Burn, do something. <laughs> I was gonna say they need you. Okay, so in this play, in this play, there's talking about, in this play there was a, there, there, there was a scene where the actress in this play, they were like, several of them, maybe four or five characters. And was, parts of the play were good, but most of it sort of fell apart. And the actress had to do a, a <coughs> nude, scene, nude scene, full frontal nude scene and walking, you know. And, and, and the thing that struck me, I mean, not that I don't applaud nudity being, you know, I do, you know, that we passed that line, but this was, a, this was an exploitation of this woman. And, and because there was, you didn't learn any, I didn't learn anything more about the, 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 the director, the writer, director, didn't seem to know, wasn't gonna share us anything more insight into the sexual habits of these particular people. He was just gonna show that they had sex, you know, mm -hmm. okay. And he could, have done, he could have given us more information that would have been more useful even in understanding what was going on between them sexually in <laughs> different kinds of expressive costuming. Mm -hmm. but, but the only insight I got uh, was that uh, it was his his limitations his his intellectual the act the director writer his his intellectual and probably sexual limitations that's all I got out of this and his relationships with his cast and his audience um, the fact that he had the ability to make this young woman do this scene look what I can do you know he presented that as uh, 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 you know, he's, he's like a bully. Uh, he was a bully. It was a bullyish thing to do. And um,
party chatter a little bit above it. And, you know, he wasn't out on a limb. He hadn't, he hadn't exposed himself. Uh, of course he had, but in a way that was acceptable. He had, you know, yeah. Ooh. tighter you know climb the mountain climb the mountain um, I went to graduate school uh, as a grown person and and I, I faced a, a prejudice that uh, I would imagine that a lot of the a lot of people do that go to school uh, older um, and, and, and I'm not talking about from my fellow students, although there certainly was that too, but it was the, pro the biggest problem came from the professors because uh, I, they didn't get any props from me from being the age they were, and that mm. was built into the kind mm -hmm. of the, the whole way that they you know, set up their control mechanisms. And, and um, I'm a professor now too, and I, 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 I have a little more sympathy with what they were doing, but not much. And, um, <laughs> It was like I was—I was like I was pulling out one of the legs from their their stool, you know, and their three-legged stool. It unbalanced them and it angered them. And uh, I remember when I was going up for a big scholarship that unfortunately I didn't get. It, was, it hurt me badly. But one of the people, one of the people on the panel said to me, "What makes you think you can go back to school at this point?" Um, I don't know, honey. You know, <laughs> it just seemed like a good idea, and I did it. And. Um, I, I, and I've always been kind of an independent person. I mean, even when I was five, I might not have given them too many props for their age. I don't know, you know. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I wasn't interested in imitating them or, you know, so excited by their achievements. And that was partly because I was ignorant of their achievements, maybe, and uh, because, you know, I, that's who I am. But it, it, they didn't like it, and, and, and they gave me grief. Um, Let's try, let's try Alfred Hitchcock's construction. Um, this has a kind of an interesting origin story, right? Well, I, I really like the way Alfred Hitchcock puts together films and, and, and there's a, one scene in To Catch a Thief it, the seduction scene between one of the many seduction scenes between Grace Kelly and Cary Grant when they're they're out on the, they've taken a ride in this wonderful sports car and they've stopped and she's made a little, little this little lovely little upper upper class lunch with little peasant beers and a and a and a, and a, and a, uh, a drumstick from chicken you know and they're yeah. eating there and they're talking and they're playing this 
power game, the seduction power game, one with the other, you know, and there's pieces of the plot in there. And um, I, I, I particularly like that. I think that's, that's a, um, a very well-designed, uh, constructive thing. I, I mean, I don't know what Alfred Hitchcock was looking at in the course of his career, um, but it, it was, it, it was, I like, I also like this other film he did where there was a serial murderer. Uh, it was towards the end of his career. It was absolutely marvelous, I, I thought. Um, and um, anyway, so I don't know what else to say about it, except I, I, I was thinking about his, you know, his building of stories, the way you build a building, you know, so he called it Alfred Hitchcock's construction. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the way I build music. Um, so should I count it off? Um, yeah. Okay, with the, and we're gonna do the Q too? <laughs> and the Q is the soprano, bar I know, 15. that's right. Okay, so let me, oh, well, you're gonna count it off because you're gonna give the cue. Okay, <laughs> I won't count it off, I'll just give the cue. Okay, okay, the cue is the count off. As we tape this, we're uh, a week away from uh, an explosion that took place at uh, in Boston, at the Boston Marathon, and then this is this 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 incredible hunt, this in completely in army gear, uh, through the streets of Boston and closing down the streets of Boston to catch this guy. Uh, the whole thing is, I I, it, I it's it's. I don't know. I, it's 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 scary. Not so much that this guy. I mean, it's, it's scary what this guy did. It's also scary what the powers that be did in response to what this guy did, and um, and what's going to happen next. Uh, um, you know, like I remember this story from ancient Rome. Uh, the really bad thing when when uh, Caesar, I think it was Caesar or somebody like that. I don't know if I saw it in a movie or it was a real story. Uh, wanted, uh, said, you, you can't march the troops into the city, into the city center. This is just not done. What, the Praetorian Guard, I think it was. We don't march the Praetorian Guard into the center of the city. That's not something that, uh, that that's not right, and that's a antithetical to the Roman idea of, you know, the value of Rome and the citizenry. And uh, I sure as heck saw the Praetorian Guard march into Boston, you know, and more of the Praetorian. It was it Caesar or Victor Mature you saw? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, Victor Mature wasn't going to march in with Praetorian Guard. I think Lawrence right. Olivier was in it. So Lawrence I don't Olivier think was, <laughs> was in it. So I don't think it was Victor Mature. There was two right. different flicks. <laughs> but anyway, that's what we saw. And I, you know, I, I just I, I like to as we make these as we make these um, to to date them in time, uh -huh. so that you uh -huh. you and we, us and you know we can know it, what what were the things that were that were acting on us, uh, or you know, the latest events, uh, not the only thing that's acting on us, uh, 
so that's what happened um, a week ago, and uh, and it's an ongoing. Um, and they're not going to read him his Miranda rights, and mm. uh, mm. and uh, and you know half of, or more of Guantanamo's on hunger strike, and more mm. than half of Guantanamo's never been charged with anything, and, and they're sitting there, you know, no. for ten years, and when are you going to let us out? I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> online and and uh, watch all the episodes and and, uh, listen to and there's, there's a whole bunch of different things going on there different episodes different kind of thing you know and, uh, you know I, I hope you enjoyed yourself and, and of course I hope you come back again later <laughs>